Hi, in this video, we're gonna look at link state routing operations. Okay, so link state routing protocols, we have open shortest path first, OSPF, uh, very popular IETF standards-based protocol, and ISIS, intermediate system to intermediate system, popular in, with a lot of service provider networks, uh, popular in Europe, uh, it's an ISO standard. There is some RFCs on it uh, that support IP, obviously. Okay, uh, let's look at the link state concepts. Uh, so I mentioned in previous video uh, that the router has, uh, will share its link state information with other routers, goes into the topo topological database. We'll talk all about this runs the SPF algorithm, come up with the shortest path first tree and offers the best path to the routing table. Let's go over how all of this works. And again, remember in link state, we come up with some kind of topology map. So routers know the almost a map of the routing domain. Let's see how this is done. So first of all, link state. A link state is information about a router's link. A link is an interface. This includes the IP prefix and prefix length, the type of the network, the cost of, you know, of that link. Cisco OSPF uses bandwidth for that. If there's any neighboring routers on that link, any adjacent neighbors. So initially, that's all the router knows is about its own links. Okay, so here we have, uh, oh, there we go. So here we have router R1 with four links. Three of the links actually have neighbors. And to learn about those neighbors, uh, as you'll see in other uh, videos, like with OSPF, that actually learned about those neighbors using hello messages. But just for now, take a look at router R1 knows about its own links, information about its own interfaces, and what type of networks they are. All right, so initially that's all R1 knows, okay? And it puts that in what is known as its link state database. And it's gonna flood that information to other routers in the routing domain. Now, it's also going to learn about uh, link states from other routers, and it's gonna build its link state information, just like R1. So R1 has information about its own links, but it's soon gonna learn information about other routers' link states in the routing domain. Let's see how this works. So router R2, there's router R2 on the right, okay? it's going to share its link state information with R1. Okay. All right, so R1 is going to add, let's take a look here. So R2 says, okay, I'm connected to R1. R1 already knows that. But you're going to see there's some other information, these, uh, this other link information that R1 is going to learn about R2. Because right now all it knows is that is R2 is just, connected to it to R1 to that where we are adjacent neighbors okay but this link state information is going to tell R1 say hey I just learned some new stuff in red I learned that you have a local area network 10500/16 with a cost of 2 I know you I learned from you that you have a link to R5 with a cost of 10 and the IP address and prefix length associated with that. Okay. All right, <clears throat> R3 has its own link state information. We see this on the right. And that information is going to be flooded throughout the, the routing domain, including sent to R1. And R1, like it did with R2, is gonna add that information to its link state database. So let's see what new information it pertains. So R1 already knew in blue there that I had a link with R3, but it learned that R3 has a local area network, 10600.16 with a cost of two. It learns that R3 is connected to R4. Didn't know that before, did it? 
okay? And what that cost is and what that network is. All right, <clears throat> from R4, it's gonna learn some information as well. And all this gets put into uh, R1's link state database. <clears throat> so really what R1 is doing at this point is just putting the information in its link state database. It hasn't made any real sense out of it yet. Uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, the shortest path first algorithm, is really what creates this tree and then determines the best path. We're kind of merging some things together here a little bit to make it more visible. Okay, let's see what R1 learns from R4. <clears throat> okay, so it already knew about R3. It learned about, it already knew about the connection between R3 and R4, I should say. It knew about R1's connection, its connection to R4 already, but it did learn about it, R4 having a connection to R5, what that network is, what the cost is. They also learned that R4 has a local area network. <clears throat> Sometimes you call this a stub network because uh, there's no adjacent router out, another router out here, but it has a network, what that prefix, prefix length is and the cost. Okay, and it can add that to its link state database and ultimately begin to form this tree. So I put in pieces of a puzzle together. Okay, just connect one piece to another piece to another piece. <clears throat> kind of like that song I learned as a little kid. I'll, you know, foot bone connected to the <clears throat> knee bone, knee bone connected to the thigh bone. I don't know if these things are, <laughs> there is a knee bone, but all the way up, you know, and that's how we interconnect. All right, last but not least, rather R5. R5 advertises its link states. And again, this is flooded, so all the routers in the routing domain get this information. When R1 gets it, it sees, okay, I already knew about um, R2 being, R5 connected to R2, I already knew that, I knew R5 connected to R4, but a new piece of information is this in red, <clears throat> the 10 11, 0, 0 network, okay? So it adds that information to its link state database. Okay. It's new information there. All right, so what happens is R1 has now constructed the shortest path first tree. And this is all done with Dijkstra's algorithm. But we're not done yet. Dijkstra's algorithm still has some stuff to do. What it's going to do now <clears throat> is determine what it's R1's best path is to each of these networks. Now, one of the key things here is that all these routers here have all flooded link state information to each other. R1 flooded its link state information, R2, R3. They all flooded it and they all received each other's link state information. So they're all coming up with the same link state information, same link state database. And they're all coming up with the same SPF tree and they're all gonna agree on what the best path is to, to reach each network. OSPF uses bandwidth. So they're all gonna come up using the same map, they can all agree on what the best path is. All right, so R1 has determined what the best path is to each network. Okay. And again, this is gonna be identical on all routers, what that path is. Okay. So it's figured out what the best path is to each network. Like R1 says, really the best path for me to reach this 10800 network down here is not directly to R4, that's a cost of 20, but I can get there from R3 and then to R4, that's 15 there. So that's cheaper, faster than this path here. And they all agree on these kinds of things. R2 agrees the same way. They all agree on the same path. Of course, R5 has a shorter path this way. Okay, so uh, the router will then offer this information, uh, determining what the best path is to each network. That information will be now offered to the routing table. And if there is no better routing source, it's not directly connected, there's not a static route that has a lower administrative distance, or uh, in a uh, unusual case with another dynamic routing protocol running a, uh, uh, a uh, another routing protocol with a better uh, administrative distance. 
Okay, but so it offers it to the routing table, these best paths. Okay, and then once in the routing table, packets will be forwarded according to these entries in the routing table. Okay, hope this helped you understand a little bit about link state operations.